language, and we've seen the paradigm shifts. We've seen it move from Latin to Middle English to Elizabethan Shakespearean English to E.E. E. Cummings' use of the vernacular and modern poetry, and now we move into the postmodern. 2012. You can't get any more modern than the poem we have right here that you just created. And we're using a modern method called the happy accident. What is the happy accident? The happy accident is this. Maybe the three of us are in a band together. She and I are playing guitar, she's rhythm, I'm playing the lead, Renee's playing the drums. I look over to Meg and say, why are you in B flat? We're in A. My solo's in A. Drummer says, no, no, that was good. We just had a happy accident, okay? We didn't mean to do an A solo against a B flat rhythm, but it happened by accident and we found a good sound. Hey, that's what we want to do. So in art as in life, try to be open to happy accidents. It happens in science too. Were they trying to make penicillin in that Petri dish? No, they weren't. It was a happy accident. So let's see if we don't have a happy accident. I'll give these a little shuffle with our class poem. And the title of the class poem is The Low Voices. The low voices of angels boom, shaking my bones with joy. Music was playing in the background while you were eating my cake. It could be the sweet, tangy, perfume blowing in my face, but it's the constant thumping echoing from the speakers. A cold droplet of water runs down his face, full of briny salts, so like the ocean. I love the taste of cool, crisp beer, but the more I drink, the less that's clear. <laughs> Bright and tight was Black Friday night. <laughs> Brush of her lips like satin across mine. Scent of apple cider, warm spray drifting between us. As I sit behind the screened window, the wind brushes sweetly across my face and the sun appears through the trees, warms my body as soft as lace. The four-legged, tri-colored hound <laughs> made my heart melt with his innocence. The iron barbell felt warm from the heat of my hand as I crashed it down to the ground. Having broken through my maximum weight, fat and juicy, bulging with delight, that bird could never win this fight. I stroked her soft back, and she nuzzled my palm, pricking me with her whiskers. The wind that blows might sway itself, and the fingers that hasn't held the fishing rod. <laughs> Walking forward, I can feel the heat from the kitchen and the screech of the chairs being pulled back. The sharp morning air stung my face as my feet pounded the cement and sent shock waves along my bones. The lunar light so vivid, so bright, is the lullaby of night. <laughs> All right, give yourself a hand. Well done. Good, good class poem. Yeah. So that's how we shift the paradigm. When somebody tells you to think outside the box, the box is the paradigm, right? That's the paradigm you want to get out of. And sometimes, if you feel stuck, like you can't, you know, if, if you run into an obstacle, and you just, wow, just keep hitting it, right? You know, don't keep trying the same tactic, you know? <laughs> Maybe go around it. Can you move it, right? There are different ways to get around the obstacle. There are different ways to shift the paradigm. But the first thing is to be aware of that paradigm, the dominant model, and to not 
mistake it for reality. All right, thanks a lot. That's the end of Paradigm Shift. Uh, okay. uh,